What a game of rugby. <laughs> Wow. Um, I'm a neutral going into this game. Um, my heart is pounded. So God only knows what it's like if you're an Ireland supporter or a uh, or a New Zealand supporter watching that game. What a phenomenal one. New Zealand taking this one 28 points to 24. Um, I thought this game would come down to one score, but uh, I didn't expect the scoreline to be that big, to be honest. I was expecting maybe it was going to be like kicking through the boots and doing lots of three points and stuff. I'm so glad it wasn't. Six tries in this game. Two teams just throwing everything at it this was like their world cup final so far in this world cup um what an unbelievably enjoyable game of rugby to watch from a neutral standpoint if you're an island supporter i bet it's absolute heartbreak for you at the minute if you're a new zealand supporter i bet you are on top of the world because what a uh, solid performance along with two yellow cards as well to still come away with that win um some solid solid works so we're going to go over the game over some uh, some full-time thoughts and reactions some of the key highlights of course as always Drop down in the comment section your thoughts on the uh, on the game because I'm sure there's a lot to talk about. What an a uh, an immense one this one was, man! I feel uh, I feel exhausted and uh, I wasn't playing. I don't know what the uh, what the players are feeling like at the minute. Well, uh, starting out then with a bit of a nervy start, I would say for uh, for New Zealand, we had two or three minutes where it looked a little bit shaky, few missed passes, few little drop balls. We saw Geordie Barrett. Bit of a skewed kick as well. Just got to have the time to uh, to settle down into the game. But a couple of penalties coming against Andrew Porter. One of the scrum and then one for uh, for being offside allowed. New Zealand to have their exit move up to the uh, the Ireland half where they began a thirty phase attack. 30 phases. I don't r remember the last time I saw an attack get to 30 phases. And I was thinking, my God, I don't know if I've ever seen a game get out to 30 phases. I don't know when the next time I'll see one will be. The, the second half. <laughs> the second half of the same game um, is where we got to see it. 30 phases of attack. Ireland defence, superb. You know, defending 30 phases. No offsides, no going off your feet in the ruck. New Zealand, no neck rolls on the clear out. Just, uh, just a clinically brilliant game overall. And that was, you know, one of the sort of standout moments for me. Um, eventually, a penalty did come against Ty Byrne, uh, which I thought was a little bit harsh because I, I felt like he got pinned in. I thought the ball was available, but the uh, the referee gave it. Richie Mawanga slotting through um, an early three points for uh, for New Zealand. And the penalties kept sort of coming New Zealand's way. It's not so much the ill discipline from, uh, from Ireland. It was just the break. Breakdown and the ability for New Zealand to get involved in the breakdown. Um, I rate Ireland as one of, if not the best teams when it comes to the breakdown. Um, New Zealand came in today and said, you know, hold my beer. I'm about to get in for this one and, and take on this game. The breakdown situation from New Zealand today, absolutely awesome. So many players absolutely, you know, just involved. Sam Kane had a solid game. Ardi Sarvea just wouldn't stop the amount of work going. Absolutely brilliant. Um, generating those penalties. And it's not from the discipline of, of Ireland. It was just that breakdown being so solid um, for New Zealand. So saw them go out to a 6-0 lead. And then New Zealand still going on that press. A little chip kick from uh, from Bowden Barrett getting inside that uh, that Ireland team's heads. Maybe he got a little chip over the top. Recovered his own bounce. We've seen Bowden Barrett do that enough number of times and then they managed to ship that ball out wide Yuani and Fainga Nuku playing very well together um, to go for the first try of the game in that 19th minute Moonga converting that one so Ireland 13-0 down I didn't think I was going to be um, saying that in this game New Zealand uh, having a really good start in that opening 20 in terms of the uh, the scoreboard um, Ireland did come back into it relatively soon afterwards straight from that kickoff uh, Ireland got a, a penalty so Johnny Sexton closed that gap by three and then Bundyaki if you ever need a man in this Ireland team to have closed up this game Bundyaki going over for his try um, solid piece of work just breaking through one of the tackles and charging over um, to bring them back up to eight and then Sexton converting that one over 13 points to 10 at the uh, at the half hour marker a brilliant comeback and just you know dominating that next 10 minutes after being put under quite a lot of, uh, of pressure in that opening 20 two other tries to talk about in that uh, that first half Ali Sarvea and uh, James Gibson Park both of theirs coming off of the, uh, the five metre line out to be fair both of them starting out from a driving wall the driving wall getting stopped um, New Zealand's peeled off one way and then uh, shipped it back out to the wing. Ardi Sarve not marked and a great winger's finish to be fair. Diving for the line got that one over. James Gibson Parks coming off the back of the mall after it got stopped and uh, sprinting around the uh, the side and taking it on himself. So we went into half time 18 points to 17 to New Zealand. It couldn't be much closer than that. But one of the issues maybe for uh, for New Zealand was that uh, that Aaron Smith yellow card. I mean, you know, talk about how close this game is. Uh, the yellow card coming in for, for Aaron Smith off a, uh, a purposeful knockdown 
The referees had a look at it, said there was a clear line break, therefore it falls in line with being a yellow card penalty. Uh, coverage in the back, though, so not a uh, not a penalty try. Um, but my goodness, I mean, how close can you get to, to not committing a foul? I mean, the ball literally touched his little finger <laughs> and fell down. A game of a game of centimetres in this one. It's kind of interesting to think about, you know, the way yellow cards have been used over this tournament. In the, the Wales-Argentina game, there was a, a, a direct shot to the head of a player and it was no foul. And yet you can have a finger touch a, touch a ball that's given as a, as a purposeful knock-on and you, uh, you suffer a yellow card. Luckily, it didn't really disrupt the uh, the game too much. Uh, so New Zealand going in only that one point ahead. They did have to start without uh, Aaron Smith, though, in that second half. Um, but a moment of appreciation, I think, for Richie Mawanga stepping in at, at scrum half I don't know, flawlessly? I've, I've seen other scrum halves in other teams that are first choice, not play as well as uh, Richie Mwanga did at scrum half today. Um, I thought it was a really so I did a box kick and everything. And it was a well-weighted box kick, landed right outside the uh, the 22. Thought it, was a, thought it was a superb job. They did say in the uh, the commentary team that uh, Jordy Barrett has now played every single position in the backs um, for New Zealand except scrum half. So I kind of wish Jordy Barrett had stepped in. And then he could say at some point across his career, he's had some international time at every position. But Richie Moonga doing a, a superb job and it allowed New Zealand to hold out this game. Um, to be fair, that 40 to 50 minute period was was really all Ireland in terms of the attack for the majority of it anyway. Um, and they had opportunities to score, but just sort of falling short. The New Zealand defence today doing so well just to refuse to let Ireland um, gain those metres. And we saw occasionally that pressure being applied and you saw them changing the tactics a couple of kicks today. In that 40 to 50 minute period, we had the... The, the two kicks out to the wing, um, both trying to get out to uh, to Pito Mani, but neither of them um, coming off. So uh, New Zealand survived with only conceding the seven with uh, with Aaron Smith off, but uh, did very well in that uh, that opening of the the second half to not concede more. New Zealand to get back on the scoreboard through Will Jordan. This was uh, just a phenomenal. This is a New Zealand try all over, right? Off the back of a set piece, Richie Moonga, the little show and go, hits the gap between two you know Irish defenders, Van der Flee and Dan Sheehan, two top defenders, just caught in two minds, hits the gap between them. Runs it up, solid tackle by Keenan, uh, but the offload to uh, to Will Jordan, no one's going to be uh, catching that boy there. And then uh, Jordy Matthew Barrett, apparently is his middle name. I'm learning that now because it's on the uh, on the scoreboard. But Jordy Barrett um, converting that one over as well to put New Zealand back out to an eight point lead. Ireland did manage to uh, to grab one back ten minutes later, though a penalty try off the back of a driving maul uh, was going over. Cody Taylor bringing that one down, getting his yellow card. So a penalty try and a yellow card brought this game back within one score. But Jordy Barrett getting uh, his final penalty over in the 69th minute to uh, to put New Zealand back out to, uh, to that four-point lead. Now, it looked like, it looked like Ireland could get one more. The final, what we would say, five minutes from, I've only just finished watching the game now, but five minutes of Irish attack, 37 phases of endless attack. Every player on that pitch looked exhausted by the end of it. Um, and I think credit to both sides. Credit to Ireland in terms of being able to keep the resilience, keep that attack going. Not a single drop ball, um, not a forward pass, no one obstructing, just doing everything by the book and surging a great attack. And then on the flip side, you've got New Zealand. Not a single penalty at the breakdown, not you know going straight off feet, not sealing it off, not just nothing. Absolutely phenomenal, brilliant rugby for 37 phases. And as a rugby fan, as a neutral watching this game, I appreciate all of that. If only we could see more games of rugby like this, where it was just, you know, all out mega attack from both sides and just not giving penalties, not giving these stupid things, which we see so many other teams do, but just real commitment by the book stuff and watching a, a phenomenal game of rugby. Eventually, though, Sam Whitelock um, managing to, uh, to get his hands on the ball for the jackal penalty eventually the uh, the isolation did kick in and uh, New Zealand kicked that one off to seal out a lead heartbreak for Ireland yet another quarterfinal exit um it's kind of mad you know you're looking back at the history for, for Ireland in the quarterfinal I'm not the person you know the quarterfinal curse I'm not someone who sort of believes in that they've got a solid team you expect them to play well in this game um but it's yet another quarterfinal it just had to be against you know New Zealand the team you come against that quarterfinal and a New Zealand team who put in probably the best performance of the year that I've seen from New Zealand. I kind of want to say I'm quickly sort of recycling games in my head. I'm trying to think back to the Rugby Championship. I think this might be the best performance from New Zealand of the uh, of the year for me, let alone the, the World Cup. I thought they were phenomenal um, in this game. Um, and a couple of standout players, like I said, Ardi Sarveya, awesome game. 
Sam Kane, who I know a lot of people have been 50-50 on over this over this World Cup and beyond, but I, I thought, again, he was immense. Jordy Barrett, who I think up till now has been, been a, a bit quiet across the World Cup. Another brilliant game. Got a, um, you know, stopping a try um, that was going over on a, on another driving wall. Jordy Barrett got underneath it and stopped that try. If that gets scored, Ireland win this game. Another superb effort by him. Richie Mowanga. Brilliant at 10, moved into scrum half, was brilliant there too. Just a thoroughly, uh, thoroughly enjoyable game. Um, in terms of the uh, the man of the match, it did eventually go to uh, to Ardi Salve. I, I think it could have gone to any of those people that I uh, that I just mentioned. In fact, so when I've just catch myself out on, Anton Leonard Brown came on um, about 15 minutes from the end for Fainga Nuku, um, who I thought was playing really well. And I, I was like, I do not understand this decision. I think this guy's doing extremely well. What are they doing bringing on Anton Leonard Brown? Put him on the wing. There were some absolutely needed to be made tackles and uh, came on. He was rushing out of the line, creating a bit of a dog leg defense, but rushing out, making a tackle stick and just shutting down Ireland from from being able to gain momentum. And, it, you know, hey, you know, that's what you want to see. If someone's question, if you're going to question what's he doing coming on the pitch, you want to see that player shut that down immediately. Go, that's why I'm on the pitch. Um, so many solid performances um, across the board. I think almost every player on this pitch can feel like they put in everything into this game but uh, New Zealand coming out on top there were areas for, for for Ireland that went a little bit awry in this game the line out again I mean considering you know the Six Nations they're probably the best team in the, in the line out this World Cup they've struggled in that line out even Dan Sheehan today taking over the throwing there was a couple of issues with that line out New Zealand were getting involved with it scrummaging quite a few penalties going against Andrew Porter um, in this one for, for sort of taking it in at the side and driving in not driving straight um, and just those little penalties you know sometimes are going to come back to really bite you there was some times as well in this game I think reflective of what we saw against South Africa from, from Ireland they won that game and South Africa missed 11 points of the post and I, I remember saying in, in that sort of review like you know that's such an important part of this game a lot of people got annoyed at that because they were like no no Ireland demolished the game they were amazing it's like but the, the kicking was was crucial in that game um and and in that game Ireland chose a couple of times to go for the corner rather than go for the posts um and had they gone for the post more that I that 11 points missed by South Africa might not have meant quite as much they did the same in this as well they were down on the scoreboard and they wanted to get into uh, into that territory and get into the corner they're driving more they're back in their own mall but there were a couple of opportunities Johnny Sexton missed one penalty today they turned down one three-pointer um in the first half which was probably very kickable for them they also turned down two in the second half but one of them led to the, the penalty try. So, you know, fair enough there. You can't take anything away from that one. You know, but there, you're talking around nine points there, you know, kicking towards the post. New Zealand, every opportunity said, we'll have the three and we'll keep going for it. Didn't necessarily get the 100% kicking rate today, um, but just being able to slot through those threes and you can just see them, you know, stacking up as they go. Sometimes that's going to help you just edge out a game. So New Zealand take this one by uh, by four points. Congratulations to New Zealand going on to the uh, the semi final. Um, if anyone's paying attention uh, to uh, my prediction so far for this quarter final, I'm zero from two. <laughs> so we'll see if we can get the clean donut uh, by the end of the quarterfinals. Apparently, I suck at predictions. So you know what do I know about rugby, guys? Even though I have a, a channel where I, uh, I talk about rugby, uh, but of course, guys, let me know your thoughts on this game. Commiserations to uh, to Ireland. Are you joining us over here in uh, in Wales at uh, going out in this round? Uh, but at least you got to watch a far more enjoyable game of, uh, of rugby on the whole. Two superb performances. Loved every second of it uh, from, uh, from a neutral standpoint. I hope you've all enjoyed this one today, guys. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.